This week, I want to begin with the inspiration for this post. My nephew Lincoln and I team up again to bring you some environmental education. If you've missed our past collaborations, check out Mondays with Martha number 49 about yellow trout lily and number 65 about wild leek. This edition is full of woods. Also, this is by Deer Creek. Dear Aunt Martha. That's good. Okay, what, what else were you supposed to say about that? Dear Aunt Martha, I love you. Okay, and what are those that you're touching? Saplings. And what are saplings? Baby trees. Baby trees. There you go. I, I said Next episode, Mondays with Martha. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Happy Monday. This is Martha with Nature Niche, and I'm here with my nephew Lincoln in Miller Woods. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about baby trees. Lincoln had an awfully good idea for my next Monday post. Baby trees are the future of the forest. They're known as um, seedlings and saplings. So seedlings are um, smaller. Yeah. Think of them yeah. as like infant plants, right? Baby plants. Yeah, yeah. And um, they are either newly germinated yeah. or yeah. pretty young. They are less than an inch in diameter, like size classification yeah, wise, yeah, yeah, yeah. at four and a half feet above ground, or um, uh, some people consider less than a yeah, meter yeah, tall. Yeah. So this might actually be up into the sapling category. This is a great example yeah, of yeah, a sapling. Yeah. Um, that's an older juvenile plant. You can think of them as the teenagers of the forest. And uh, they're yeah. at, at least yeah, a meter yeah. in height and tend to be one to five inches in diameter at four and a half feet above the ground. And they're just not at an age yet where they're flowering or uh, producing fruit usually. The establishment of a seedling is the single most critical period in a woody plant's life. And those individuals that do uh, establish within the ground cover of a forest and then are able to uh, keep growing into saplings and become part of the understory. They will eventually grow up to be part of the overstory or the canopy trees and that concept um, is known as advanced regeneration where the saplings and the seedlings kind of hang out in that darker um, lower layers of the forest but then they're able to accelerate their growth and really take off when they're released from um, overstory shade and competition from those canopy trees. And usually that happens with some form of disturbance, whether that be natural from fire or a windstorm um, or uh, a pest outbreak and death of those overstory trees um, or human caused disturbance from logging or the use of herbicides as examples. The ability to survive and prosper in the forest understory depends on a seedling and saplings tolerance of several factors uh, that may be very limiting in that forest understory environment. So reduced light intensity is a big one, that deep shade down at the forest floor and lower levels. Species like American beech, eastern hemlock, and sugar maple do well in deep shade, whereas shade intolerant species like willows, eastern cottonwood, aspens, white birch, sycamore, jack pine, and tamarack struggle and die in deep shade. So here we see a sugar maple seedling, and both sugar maple and beech are doing well in this particular woodland in the uh, lower layers of the forest. In particular, root development is especially hindered by uh, the lack of light. I think the, the seedlings are putting a lot of energy and mass into leaves to try to capture light and maybe can't put as much energy into root development. Other factors include uh, moisture availability, there's often intense competition for soil water, um, especially in midsummer from the roots of the larger, well established trees, as well as competition for nutrients. 
uh, both from trees and other herbaceous ground cover species. So uh, that's one important reason to have and keep your leaf litter in your own um, yards and, and woodlots that helps retain moisture and provides nutrients as those leaves decompose. Um, and then there's microclimate, little frost pockets that the little seedlings have to deal with, maybe some wet depressions or exposure to wind. There are browsing animals. Think about all of the eastern cottontail rabbits and white-tailed deer that like to come through and uh, browse on our trees, seedlings, and saplings as well as insects that really like the tender new leaves and the soft stems of the younger woody plant material. And then disease. Um, more fungal infections are typical in shadier um, conditions, so the seedlings have to, to contend with that as well. So tolerance to shade and other understory conditions really varies by species. And by age, seedlings are more tolerant of shade and those tricky understory um, environmental conditions than older individuals of the same species. So a good example of that um, would be white ash and uh, black cherry. They sort of lose their uh, shade tolerance as they age and really need gaps to open up to get established. So here at Miller Woods, to have large overstory black cherries, like the one Lincoln's looking at here, we know at some point some event happened to really open up the canopy so that this particular black cherry could uh, be recruited and get up into the overstory of the forest. And I like to tell folks, look at the forest ground cover, see what the, the woody plant species are because that is the future of the forest. Lincoln here is looking at a small glossy buckthorn seedling, which is invasive, but we really didn't see many of those. There was a lot of um, sugar maple and beech, and so without major disturbance, um, and it seems with continued invasive species effort out here, uh, that is the future of the canopy of Miller Woods. So fall and winter is a great time to wander through the forest or uh, wooded areas near your yeah, home yeah. and uh, to think about, you know, what is the future of that forest going to be? And you can tell that by yeah, what yeah. are the seedlings, what are the saplings. So if you see, uh, especially, you know, late in the season when all the native plants have dropped their leaves, things like yeah, the multi-floor yeah. rose, the invasive common buckthorn, yeah, this invasive yeah. uh, uh, yeah, max yeah. honeysuckle, one of the invasive Eurasian honeysuckles. That's the future of the forest. That is what will be next if you don't um, take action. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what you can do to influence the, the future of the forest and help out our native seedlings and saplings. You can, in a place that um, doesn't have a lot of good native uh, seedlings and saplings, you can plant them yourself. Find gaps, look up um, and find gaps in the canopy and place seedlings and saplings there. You can also prune um, or somehow remove trees and you especially want to focus on those invasive species that will overgrow. Uh, the native seedlings and saplings and by doing that you're increasing light availability so that they can grow better. You can provide um, supplemental water and that's especially important in dry landscapes to help those seedlings and saplings develop good root systems and you can also place a cage around or a fence um, around yeah, yeah. the plants, those native trees uh, that you want to be part of the future of your forest fence those off um, to help protect them from herbivory by mammals like white-tailed deer, um, cotton-tailed rabbits, mice, things like that. So out here there is a quite a stark contrast. I think this fence line might be a property boundary and you could see the invasive species that were still holding on to their leaves even you know on Thanksgiving um, compared to the fairly clear understory 
with uh, just the some of the juvenile trees uh, having changed color and, and holding onto their leaves a little longer, which is typical. But you can see very, very, very little, if any, green in the understory of the managed part of that woodland. Also, don't forget to get our kids out into nature, help them understand the, the forest and how the different layers work. Uh, they're a very important part of the future of the forest as well. They are the future stewards and uh, managers of our forested ecosystems. I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about seedlings and saplings and how they shape the future of the forest. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Thanks, thanks so much, Lincoln, for the idea and for showing uh -huh. me your woods. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Take care.